Hi all, uh, my name is Cara Baggett. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist um, and an assistant professor at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the work that the Novel Technologies Workgroup has been doing, um, particularly around uh, measuring screen time exposure in the ABCD cohort. <laughs> So the learning objectives of this lecture include understanding the types of data that can be collected using mobile and digital techno technologies, particularly those that are being employed in ABCD. We want to understand the link between screen exposure and health in, and in youth. And we want to identify variations in screen time data over the ABCD study years. Um, so just to give you a brief overview, I'm going to give um, a little background and rationale for the use of novel technologies in ABCD and sort of the use of um, screen time measurements in ABCD. We're going to talk about the mobile and wearable technologies that are currently being employed in ABCD. So that includes Fitbit and the Effortless Assessment of Risk States or the EARS app. Um, and so when we talk about these two technologies, uh, we'll give a little bit more background. Um, we'll spend um, a bit of time on methods of da data capture. When we talk about Fitbit, we'll talk about procedures for protection of data. Um, we'll do so as well for ears, and then we'll talk about pre-processing of the data. And then we'll spend um, a good deal of time talking about the self-report data, the questionnaires being used in ABCD to look at screen time. Um, so I'll give a background for that as well, and we'll spend some time talking about the variations in these questionnaires across time. So how they change from baseline to year two, year three, and um, touch upon year four. So let's talk, talk about um, the overall background and rationale for, for measuring screen exposure in youth. Um, so we know that there are a lot of real-time factors that contribute to developmental outcomes in youth. Using mobile and digital technologies allow us to measure within person intensive longitudinal high temporal resolution data. So we can get data on environmental, physiological, behavioral and psychological factors. Um, but not only that, we can see how these interact with each other in real time to influ influence development and health in, in children. So by using these mobile and digital technologies, we're really getting indices of behavior in real time. So we can use um, measurements such as physical activity, geolocation, sleep, phone use duration, um, kids' choice in music, facial expressions, acoustic vocal quality, and natural language use to infer uh, mental health states or even behaviors in, in participants. So let's start with a Fitbit. So just a little bit of background, we know that um, decreased or poor quality sleep is associated with alcohol, cannabis, tobacco, and other sub substance use in youth. It's also associated with depression and suicidality in youth. Uh, low levels of physical activity or low levels of moderate to vigorous physical activity in youth is associated with obesity, type two diabetes, depression, and anxiety. And we also know that there are really negative long-term outcomes as well, like cardiovascular disease and even mortality. And so the gold standard measurements for physical activity and sleep are indirect calorimeters for physical activity, electrocardiograms for heart rate and polysomnography for sleep. However, these gold standard instruments are really burdensome to sort of implement in studies. You have to really be in the lab um, and, they're, and they're costly as well. And so if we wanna be able to measure neuropsychological and physiological um, mechanisms, um, which we know contribute to physical activity and sleep, ABCD provides a really wonderful way to do that. Um, and if we can, we can measure physical activity sleep in a low burdensome and low cost way, then we can look at um, really complex relationships. And so the goal here in ABCD is to look at in vivo physical activity and sleep via Fitbit and how that relates to health outcomes in youth. And so um, currently in, in ABCD, we're using the Fitbit Charge 2 um, to capture physical activity and sleep data. Um, the sensors in this device include a triaxial accelerometer, optical, um, it measures optical heart rate, an altimeter, um, and we get continuous measurements of data at greater than one hertz. It stores data at the minute level, and you don't need to recharge um, up until about five days of data capture. Um, so use of the Fitbit charge, not the charge suit, but the Fitbit charge, the previous iteration was validated in children nine to 10 years 
of age at UCSD prior to us um, piloting, piloting the Fitbit in ABCD and then rolling it out to the entire cohort. So the types of data that we are getting um, from the Fitbit charge too are steps per minute, distance traveled per minute, physical activity intensity, so intense activity, moderate light, and energy expenditure, including resting and active calories, um, a number of sleep measures, heart rate, as well as stairs in terms of flights per day. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the pilot that we did um, prior to rolling this um, out to the entire ABCD cohort. Um, and that'll give you an idea of sort of the data that's being collected and, and what we can use it for. So for um, the pilot, as well as the entire ABCD cohort, um, kids are wearing the Fitbit for about 22 days. So the day of deployment counts as day one, plus 21 full days of data collection. Um, youth and parents fill out questionnaires about youth Fitbit use on day one and day 22. Um, in the pilot, we had about 150 participants um, spread out more or less equally across three sites, SRI, UCSD, and VCU. On the data analysis side of the pilot, we ended up excluding a number of participants. Six participants were excluded after um, wear was completed due to less than 21 wear days. So we had less than 21 days of data. There were eight participants that were excluded because they had no time with valid heart rate data. Um, and this included these of the eight participants, two of these also had less than 21 days of wear time. So these two exclusionary criteria were not um, mutually exclusive. So this is a look at the youth pre-questionnaire, the pre-assessment um, prior to, to Fitbit deployment. Um, compared to other boys and girls your age, how, many phys how much physical activity do you do? Do you, do you think the amount of physical activity you do is healthy? Compared to other boys or girls your age, how many sedentary behaviors do you do? Do you think the amount of sedentary behaviors you do is healthy? Compared to other boys or girls your age, how much sleep do you get? Do you think the amount of sleep you do is healthy? Do any of your friends wear a Fitbit or other activity tracker? Um, now the, the next um, bank of questions, the next five questions are highlighted in yellow because these are specific to the pre-assessment. The ones that I've read already um, are also asked in the post-assessment. So um, for the five that are unique to the pre-assessment, how long do you think it will take you to learn to use the Fitbit? How often do you think you will have to remove the Fitbit? How much do you think you will change your activities while wearing the Fitbit? How much do you think you will enjoy using the Fitbit? And do you think you're wearing the Fitbit will be annoying? So for the post-assessment, we'll, we see that the first um, six questions are the same as the pre-assessment, so I won't read them again. And then there are a number of questions that are specific to um, having worn the Fitbit and having that experience. And so we'll start with the first yellow question. How, com how comfortable were you wearing the Fitbit in front of your friends? How interested were your friends in the Fitbit? How good or bad were their comments about the Fitbit? Do you feel encouraged by your friends to wear the Fitbit? How long did it take you to learn to use the Fitbit? How often did you have to remove the Fitbit? When did you take it off? During what activities? And during this, for this question, we have um, kids answer in sort of open text. Um, during what sport did you take it off? Again, open text. During what activity, did, during what other activity did you take it off? Uh, how often did you forget to put it back on after taking it off? How often did you check the Fitbit to get information about your activity? Did you use the app and website to, to see your Fitbit activity? Would you have liked to use the app and website to see your Fitbit activity? How much did you change your sleep while wearing the Fitbit? How much do you think, um, how much did you enjoy using the Fitbit? I found the Fitbit too complicated. I felt confident using the Fitbit. What were the good things about wearing the Fitbit? What were the bad things about wearing the Fitbit? And do you think you will ask your parents to buy a Fitbit or other activity tracker for you to use in the future? Okay, so the parent questionnaire is um, uh, a lot less involved. Um, here, I collapse the pre and post questionnaires into to one table. The post questionnaire is exactly the same as the pre questionnaire, except with the addition of those highlighted in yellow, which I will read quickly. In your opinion, compared to other boys or girls, your son or daughter's age, how much physical activity does your child get? In your opinion, do you think the amount of physical activity or 
um, your child does is healthy. In your opinion, compared to other boys or girls, your son or daughter's age, how many sedentary behaviors does your child engage in? In your opinion, do you think the amount of sedentary behaviors your child engages in is healthy? In your opinion, compared to other boys um, or girls, your sons or daughters, daughter's age, how much sleep does your child get? In your opinion, do you think the amount of, of sleep your child gets is healthy? Did he or she change his or her activity or sleep based on the information? Did you use the app and or website to see your child's Fitbit activity? If yes, did you encourage your child to change his or her activity or sleep based on the information? Did your child use the app and or website to see his or her Fitbit activity? If yes, did he change his or her activity or sleep based on the information? And if we asked your child to wear the Fitbit for a longer period of time, would you do it? And so some of these questions are really important around um, looking at the app or the website to gauge activity um, and whether or not parents encourage their kids to change their behavior, right? Because ABCD is not an, a, a, a treatment or an intervention study. It really is an assessment study. So we want to see how active these kids just are at baseline, um, how much they sleep at baseline. We really don't want to um, use the Fitbit as a way to intervene in low physical activity or poor sleep. Okay, so um, in terms of pre-processing, I mentioned earlier the data is collected at the minute level. So at the minute level, data was screened um, for unlikely or aphysiologic heart rates in children. And so the cutoffs based on the literature are heart rates over um, 200 or over or 50 or less. And we also um, identified strings of repeated values. So identical heart rates in sequential minutes um, or identical heart rates proceeding and following, following a string of missing values. So those that data was um, excluded. So in terms of inclusion, um, 600 or more minutes per day of data was included. And if kids had uh, four days or more a week with at least one weekend day of data, then that was included. And so now this minute le level data is then um, put into process into summary va variables. And the summary variables are what are, are released in the data release. Um, so we look at, we release number of steps, resting heart rate, um, metabolic equivalent of tasks, so that's METS, and activity intensity. So sedentary, light activity, light activity fairly active and active. So here you can see um, some of the work from the pilot, just as an example. So looking at the, the amount of data that was excluded based on an aphysiological signal, so unlikely heart rate values. So again, that's minutes with heart rate less than 50. Um, so you see that about 17% of participants in the pilot were affected by um, that cutoff. And then if we look at minutes with heart rate over 200, we see that um, less than one and a half percent of participants in the pilot were affected. So we're not missing much data by using those cutoffs. And now if we looked at um, look at data exclusion based on uh, repeated heart rate. Um, so again, based on the literature, the cutoff is uh, 11 um, or more instances of repeated heart rate in a row. Um, and you see that over the entire um, study that there were um, about 3,000 instances, which excluded about 18% of the available minutes. So now let's switch to data inclusion. So if we look at um, the cutoff of greater than um, 599 minutes per day, um, that we see at the, the participant level um, that there were about 15 days of valid data across the entire 22 day um, period of the protocol, which is about 73% of the total possible days. If we look across the entire sample at the weekly level, we see that we captured about 87% of the, the possible weeks um, using the 599 minute cutoff. If we look at the cutoff of four days or more per week with one or more weekend day, we see that we captured about 80% of all total possible weeks of data in the pilot. Okay, now we're switching to the EARS app. Um, so just a little background. So we know tweens eight to 12 um, years of age spend about five years 
excuse me, five hours per day engaged in screen media activity. And about 80% of this takes place on the, on the smartphone. And then teens 13 to 18 years of age spend about seven hours per day engaged in screen media activity with about 85% of the time spent on their smartphone. So they're spending a lot of their screen media sort of exposure um, is happening actually through their, through their mobile devices. And so if we look at data from the Pew Research Center, um, we know that the number of teens that own or have regular access to a mobile phone has increased by like about 20% over the past five years. Um, so such that about 95% of, of teens here in the US um, own or have regular access to a smartphone. And what's really interesting about this data is we actually see higher ownership rates among um, underrepresented minorities and, and youth from low SES backgrounds. So this actually provides, using smartphones actually provides a really wonderful way to capture data and sort of engage um, kids from traditionally underserved um, backgrounds and, and kids that are underrepresented in, in research studies. And so the goal um, in using the EARS app is to collect longitudinal objective smartphone data. So we can actually look at the trajectory of smartphone use um, as, as these kids move from sort of tweens to adolescence into young adulthood. And then we can map the changes across time and types of information that they're accessing using their smartphones and sort of their smartphone related behaviors. And then we can look at change in behavior, brain development, psychopathology, and health in relation to changes in um, smartphone use over time. So in terms of data capture, um, ears can be, um, the ears app is made for Android phones. Um, the iOS operating system doesn't allow for passive scraping. So we, we aren't at this time at least able to, um, to use ears on iPhones. Um, it requires an operating system on an Android phone of, phone of 6.0 or newer. It is a passive sensing app that kids are downloading from the Google Play Store. It's running constantly in the background. Um, it scrapes the operating system every three minutes, uh, measures things like screen on or off, um, foreground applications, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means and how um, that may affect the data, um, and also measures date and time logged for each instance of application use. There's no participant app interaction. If the participants try to open the app or um, do anything with the app, they get a message that says, you are changing the future of health and wellness. Um, if no data is being collected, um, then the app will push no a notification to the participant to open the app. If there's no data collection for a few days, the uh, research assistant will call to sort of troubleshoot problems with the, with the youth. In terms of data protection, um, data, and apologies, it shouldn't say fit, but it should say ears. So ears, uh, data protection. So data is encrypted before upload to a secure cloud server. There's no identifiable information collected. So name, age, phone numbers, or things like text or voice content. Um, so in terms of methods, so um, EARS has not been rolled out to the entire cohort, but when it is, it will be um, done at the same at the same time that kids are, are doing the Fitbit, or um, at the same time we're collecting Fitbit data. So they will be wearing it for 22 days. Again, um, first day being day of deployment and 21 days of data um, capture. In the pilot, they were wearing, um, excuse me, they, they downloaded and used EARS for about a month. So um, in the pilot, there was about an average of 34 days of data collection, um, 24 weekdays and about 10 um, weekend days. We had youth and parent complete self-report questionnaires on day one. And again, um, they will collect it on day 22 when it's rolled out into the entire cohort, but on the last day of data collection um, for the pilot. In the pilot, there was about 67 participants. Um, the pilot occurred during the year two, fo two follow-up. And just to give you an idea of how many kids would even be eligible for the study, because it's um, you have to own your own phone and it must be an Android um, platform. So in data release 3.0, of the like about 6,500 participants in that data release, 
37% had no smartphone. So about a third of the kids did not even own their own mobile phone. Um, another 38% had an iPhone and then 23% had an Android. So at this point in the study, about a quarter of kids would even be eligible for, for years. So we're actually not capturing, we won't actually be able to capture data on the entire cohort as of yet. Um, so there are a number of um, pre-assessment and post questionnaires, um, again, both for youth and parents. Um, so we'll, we'll go through the pre-assessment questionnaire for youth first. Um, so how much time, how much of time on a weekday do you spend on a mobile device specifically? How much time on a weekend day do you spend on a mobile device specifically? Do your parents limit the amount of time you can use screens? Um, do your parents limit the amount of time you can use your mobile device? Have your parents ever installed or used an app on your device to monitor your phone use? In your opinion, compared to other boys or girls your age, how much do you use your mobile device? In your opinion, do you think the amount of time you spend on your device is healthy? And then on the post-assessment, um, you can see in white, it's the same two questions that overlap with the sort of the pre-assessment. And for the, um, the questions that are unique to the, um, the post-assessment, were there any days during the past four weeks that you did not use your mobile device? If yes, how many days did you not use your mobile device? How much did you change how you use your mobile device while having the application on your phone, on your device? If we asked you to have the application on your device longer, would you do it? If the application would ask you a few days, a few questions every day, would that be okay with you? So again, um, ABCD is not an intervention trial. We don't want kids to change their behavior based on um, things that we're asking them to do. So we wanna see if by measuring um, their sort of mobile phone usage, if that actually changes their mobile phone behaviors. Um, and then also thinking about other ways that um, we can use smartphones and we can use the EARS app to sort of measure um, real-time contributors to health. Um, one of those ways is ecological momentary assessment, right? So pushing questions to a kid's um, smartphone through the app. And so that sort of gets to the last question. Um, so that if we incorporated EMA into the app, um, is this something that would be amenable to, to kids? Okay, in terms of the pair questionnaire, much shorter again. Um, so the pre-assessment, how much time on a weekday does your child spend on their mobile device specifically? How much time on a weekend day um, do they spend on a mobile device specifically? What are the family rules about screen time for your son or daughter? Have you ever installed an app on your child's mobile, mobile device to monitor their screen use? Um, Post-assessment, um, again, first two questions, um, same as the pre-assessment. And then in yellow, the differences are highlighted. Did you monitor your child's use of their device more closely over the past month? Since your child started participating in this sub-study, have you noticed a change in his or her mobile device use? If yes, have they used their mobile um, phone more or less? And you can see here, um, the sample size was actually kind of, the, the number of kids that changed um, their phone use, at least in the pilot, um, was relatively small, so four. Um, and if we asked your child to use a mobile device monitoring application for a longer period of time, would you do it? Um, and so this just gives you a little look at the pilot data. Um, and so just for simplicity, I just have the averages here. So for the pre-assessment um, youth, um, they estimated their amount of weekday um, mobile phone use is about two hours and 30 minutes and their weekend. So per day on the weekend as four hours and 56 minutes. In the post-assessment, um, uh, their, their perception of their weekday use increased to three hours and 11 minutes, um, and their perception of their weekend use decreased to four hours and 10 minutes. In the pre-assessment, parents' um, perception of their child's weekday smartphone use was about three hours and 40 minutes, weekend four hours and 56 minutes, so right on, right on target with their, their children. Um, in the post-assessment, the parent the parent's perception of weekday use also increased to four hours and 35 minutes um, and was the same on the weekend. And so in terms of pre-processing the, the EARS data, um, so in terms of the data release, Google Play Store um, category summaries of apps are available. Um, and so in the pilot, we sort of summed our own application um, use to to describe composite categories that were 
um, discrepant from the Google Play Store. So for example, for a communication category, we included things like Discord and Facebook. For gaming category, things like Temple Run 2, Mario Kart Tour. Um, for the music category, um, apps such as Shazam, Google Play Music, um, news included weather forecast, HuffPost News, and then other categories included reading, social media, streaming. Um, we also created two standalone categories, created each from one app. So um, SS, SMS messages, so basic testing, texting rather, and then YouTube. And these two standalone categories were not mutually exclusive from the composite categories. Um, so here you can see um, data from the pilot. Again, um, so it shows average daily sort of app use um, in all of these categories, as well as average weekday um, use of all these categories and average weekend. Um, so you can see um, total screen on time um, daily is about three hours and 50 minutes. We see that it's a little bit higher on the weekend than it is during the week, about an hour higher on the weekend than it is during the week. Um, in terms of the apps used the most, we can see that um, streaming was was the 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 most used sort of composite category um, of apps, followed by YouTube, which again was a standalone category, and then communication, um, and then social media after that. Um, so I just want to there's an asterisk by <clears throat> excuse me music because I just want to make a note of that. So we see that the average daily, weekday, and weekend um, use of the music apps was very low. Um, but this is sort of um, uh, deceiving in that um, because the app only, the ears app only measures when you're doing something actively, right? You're turning something on or off. Um, if music is just playing and you're not actively selecting songs to play or you're not turning on or off music, it's actually not measuring it. Um, so when we look at the two minute um, average daily use, that is actually not reflective of how much music they're listening to their on their phones. That just means they're not changing the song actively very much. They're just listening to sort of strings of music. Um, and that's it. So at this point, we don't have a very good measure of um, of how much music they're listening to or how much time they're spending music, listening to music on their phones. Okay, so let's switch now to screen time questionnaires. This is the last section. Um, so we know screen media activity is really complex and encompasses passive and active, as well as social and isolative activities. We also know that screen media activity encompasses more than just smartphone use. Although a lot of screen media exposure does occur through the smartphone, there are other devices that kids are, are using that we just can't measure as easily as downloading an app, right? So things like using um, video gaming consoles like an Xbox, um, if they're using a desktop or a, last, a laptop computer, iPads, things like that. Um, but we do know that screen media activity is associated with um, things like attention, memory, reward processing, depression, anxiety, and externalizing symptoms in youth. And so we do wanna be able to capture sort of overall screen exposure, um, even outside of smartphone use. And so the goal here is to collect longitudinal screen time data, much like we're doing with smartphone use, so that we can, we can really measure and look at a trajectory of screen time exposure as these kids, again, move from um, sort of tweendom or childhood into adolescence and then again into young adulthood. We wanna be able to map changes in the types of information access and the behaviors that these kids are exhibiting across devices. And then we wanna link that to changes in behavior, brain development, psychopathology and health, right? The other measures that ABCD is capturing. Um, and so in terms of data capture, this is really um, youth self-report and then parent report of youth use. Um, we're getting this data at um, yearly. So at baseline, um, year two, year three, and year four. Um, and there were updates at year two, year three, and year four. So this is constantly evolving. Um, so uh, we're gonna go through all the changes. I tried to make this as simple and easy to understand as possible. Uh, so hopefully um, I succeeded in doing that. We'll see. Okay, um, so for the youth questionnaire, so the questions that had no changes from baseline to year two 
then to year three are how often do you play mature rated video games and examples call of duty grand theft auto etc never once in a while regularly all the time how often do you watch our rated movie movies never once in a while regularly all the time so these questions have not changed since baseline at all okay so now changes from baseline to year two on a typical weekday or weekend how much time per day do you? So these questions are asked for a typical weekday and then they're asked again for a typical weekend. Okay, so in I highlighted in yellow the changes that we made moving from baseline to year two and then these changes were maintained in year three as well. So watch or stream TV shows or movies. And so we added or stream and we added a number of examples such as Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, um, and not including videos on YouTube. Um, we added, um, sorry, I forgot to highlight um, or stream in question two. So watch or stream videos such as YouTube. Um, so questions three and four are, are actually really important changes. So at baseline, we just asked them about playing video games on a computer console phone or, or other device. And we gave some examples, you know, but, um, and so, Video gaming can be actually a very social activity for some kids. And so if we don't ask them about single player versus multiplayer um, video gaming, we may miss the social aspect that is embedded in some types of um, games. So in year two, we asked them specifically about how, um, how much they're playing single player games. We added Apple TV as an example, and then we added a question about how often, how much they're playing multiplayer video games on a computer console, phone, or other device. Um, and we specifically asked where you can interact with others in the game, because that captures the social component that we weren't capturing at baseline. And then the following three questions um, are actually remain the same from baseline to year two and then were maintained at year three. So texting on a cell phone, tablet, computer, iPod, or other electronic device. Um, uh, how much time are they visiting social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? And how much time are they spending video chatting on, on, on platforms like Skype or FaceTime? Um, so one important note is these will continue to change over time because platforms change over time. Popularity of platforms change over time. Um, and so you'll see that over, as we move from even year two to year three, we add some different examples of different platforms. Um, and then in terms of time for all of these questions, these are drop down menus. So kids are able to choose um, the number of hours between zero and 23. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And then they have a drop down menu of minutes um, from zero to 45 and 15 minute increments. So we can measure anywhere from um, zero hours, zero minutes, or zero hours, 15 minutes of use all the way up to 23 hours and 45 minutes of, of use of any of these. Okay, so now these are additions, additions um, moving from baseline, baseline to year two. So these questions are not included at baseline, but are included at year two. And these um, talk about sort of total device use. So on a typical weekday, Monday through Friday, how much time in total, per day in total, do you spend on a computer, cell phone, tablet, iPod, or other electronic de device or video game? We asked the same question about a weekend day. Again, this is a drop down um, menu of hours zero to 23 and minutes zero to 45 and 15 minute increments. Um, again, more additions to year two, specifically about mobile phone or smartphone. Um, do you, this is the first time we ask them if they have their own cell phone. If they say yes, on a scale of one to 10, with one equals barely checking it, can go days without it, and 10 equals checking it at least hourly when awake. How attached are you to your smartphone? These are additional additions to year two that are then maintained in year three. Um, this is the mobile phone involvement questionnaire. There are eight questions here. Um, and we ask them how much they agree with the following statements. Um, I interrupt whatever else I'm doing when I'm contacted on my mobile phone. I often use my mobile phone for no particular reason. I feel connected to others when I'm using my mobile phone. Arguments have arisen with others because of my mobile phone use. I lose track of how much I'm using my, mo my mobile phone. I often think about my mobile phone when I'm not using it. I have been unable to reduce my mobile phone um, use. And the thought of being without my mobile phone makes me feel distressed. Okay, additional additions um, to year two include social media questions. So we have them list the number of social media sites that they have an account on. 
um, and how many accounts they have on each of these sites. So we really want to hear here capture um, this idea of public versus private accounts. Um, so things like Finsta, right, like fake Instagram. So um, that gives us an idea of how much actually their parents know what's going on with them in terms of social media if they have um, private accounts. Um, we wanted to know also which social media site um, they use the most and had them check off from this list or write in. Again, these lists will change over time as we move through ABCD. Platforms change in popularity all the time. Okay, based on what they click to the left, on the social media site that you use the most, is your account public or private? On the social media site um, you use the most, how many followers do you have? On the social media site you use the most, how many people or groups are you following and how much time per day do you spend on social media accounts? Again, drop down menu, hours zero to 23 minutes, um, zero to 45 in 15 minute increments. Um, we also added a social media quote unquote addiction questionnaire based on um, questionnaires that have been developed and published in the literature. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about social media or planning the use of my social media. I feel the need to use social media more and more. I use social media so I can forget about my problems. I've tried to use my social media less, but I can't. I become stressed or upset if I'm not allowed to use social media. And I use social media so much that it has had a bad effect on my schoolwork or job. Okay. Additional, um, so more additions in year two around sleep. Is there a TV set or an internet connected electronic device in your bedroom? Um, what do you usually do with your cell phone when you're ready to go to sleep? Um, do you turn the phone off, put the ringer on, silent or vibrate, leave the ringer on? In the past year, how often have you had phone calls, text messages, or emails that wake you after trying to go to sleep? In the past year, when you woke up during the night, how often have you used your phone or other device to send messages, play games, surf the internet, use social media, read or write emails? Okay, um, we added a sleep questionnaire. Um, in the past year, how often did you do the following activities while already in bed before going to sleep? Um, so watch TV or movies, play video games, play music, talk on the phone or text, spend time online on social media, spend time in chat rooms, surf the internet, use a computer or laptop for studying or reading. So this was added again in year two, maintained in year three. Okay, so now looking at youth questionnaire changes um, from year two to year three. So we added um, the, the phrase live stream to the question about watching or streaming videos. And we added the example of Twitch. Again, every almost every year, there should be new examples added as things change in popularity. Um, we added the example of VR chat um, to the video chatting question. Um, we changed some of the language around the social networking question um, to ask about social media apps. We added some examples of um, Musical.ly and Snapchat. And we added the, the caveat that we don't want them to include time spent editing photos or videos to post on social media when they talk about, when they report the amount of time they're spending on social media apps. We changed the language around the owning your own um, cell phone. So we're now calling it a mobile phone um, and added um, smartwatch. So do you have your own mobile phone or smartwatch? And in the social media related questions, the list where we asked them which um, sites they have an account on, we added TikTok again. So things change over time. We're gonna be making small um, changes like that um, probably pretty consistently. Um, additional additions to year three, including um, a question about editing photos or videos to post on social media. Again, drop down um, box in regards to time, hours to zero to, 20, zero to 23 and minutes zero to 45 and 15 minute increments and searching or browsing the internet. Example, using um, a search engine like Google that is not for school. So qualifying, trying to separate, separate out um, school use versus um, sort of personal use. And I think that's gonna be especially important this year because of COVID and a, a lot of remote schooling. Um, we also added a video game addiction questionnaire that mimics the social media addiction questionnaire. Um, we added questions about online dating as well um, in year three. So have you ever used a dating app? Are you currently using a dating app? How much time per week do you spend on online dating apps? And have you ever arranged an in-person meeting with someone you met um, only on a dating app? 
Okay, so now switching to parent questionnaires. So those were um, the youth questionnaires from baseline to year three. Um, and so um, we're now working on year four um, questionnaires as well. Um, so the questionnaire um, in terms of the data release may look a little bit different um, only because we're trying to streamline the questionnaires so that it's less burdensome. It takes the kids a little bit less longer. Um, to answer the questions, but we should be able to capture the same data so that we can sort of look at it longitudinally, right? So we can look at changes across time still. Okay, so the parent questionnaires are um, less involved and there are fewer changes. So looking at changes at base from baseline to year two, um, we see that um, in the question on a typical weekday or weekend, how much time per day does your child spend in total on a computer, cell phone, tablet? We added iPod in year two or other electronic device. Other year two additions include device use. Does your child have their own device? Um, cell phone, tablet, laptop, iPod, or similar device? If yes to any of those questions, do they have internet or Wi-Fi capabilities, sorry, on any of these devices? If yes to cell phone, what kind of cell phone does your child have? If How old was your child when he or she first got their own cell phone? If your child does not have their own cell phone, do you allow them to use yours? Um, additions reg regarding social media, are you following or friends with your child on any social media sites? And then give examples. Do you, sus um, do you suspect that your child has social media accounts that you are unaware of? Um, questions about just sort of general internet use that were added. I feel like my child spends too much time online. I worry that my child will view inappropriate things online. I worry that my child will post inappropriate things online. In terms of overall screen media activity, we wanted to know um, what types of screen media that um, your child uses the most, not including screen media used for school or homework. Again, this will be really important, especially this year in, in COVID and sort of delineating personal versus, versus other use. And when we, and we make sure to be clear with parents, when we talk about screen media activity, we're talking about anything, um, any sort of device, right? So that includes television, video games, tablets, smartphones, handheld video games, laptops, computers, anything electronic. Um, we also added um, a, a more sort of cohesive questionnaire around screen media activity for parents. So my child sneaks using screen media. Screen media, media is all that my child seems to think about. It is hard for my child to stop using screen media. When my child has had a bad day, screen media seems to be the only thing that helps him or her feel better. My child's screen media use causes problems for the family. The amount of time my child wants to use screen media keeps increasing. Screen media is the only thing that seems to motivate my child. My child becomes frustrated when he or she cannot use screen media. And my child's screen media use interferes with family activities. So those are all the screen time data that we are collecting and have been collecting since baseline um, in the ABCD cohort. Um, so just to, just to summarize, so I talked a little bit about the background and rationale for novel technologies in ABCD and measuring screen time, right, is that we can really capture real-time factors that contribute to sort of development and health and youth um, over time. And that the mobile and wearable technologies that we're currently using in ABCD include Fitbit and the EARS app um, that give us a sense of Fitbit, in particular, of physical activity and sleep and ears in terms of just overall smartphone use. Like what are kids are doing with their smartphones? How much time they're spending on their smartphones? And over time we can add capability to ears so that we can actually um, look at um, uh, pushing questions to them every day to get a, a more frequent sense of overall health status and maybe even mental health status as well. Um, and then self-report data. So the self-report questionnaires are the, the ones that have changed the most over time um, from implementation at baseline. Um, and they will continue to get more detailed as things change over time. And um, these are fluid because technology changes so quickly um, and the things that kids are using and how they're engaging with technology changes really quickly. Um, and so we will try to stay on top of all of that. Thank you so much. Um, everyone for listening. Um.